Hello everyone, my name is Angie and welcome or welcome back to my channel, Angie Rose Nomad. Today I have a small, cozy book haul for you guys. Yes, I have a book haul. Yes, I broke the book buying van. Can we just, can we move past this please? Let's, you know, but it wasn't like a full on break. It wasn't, you know, like a shatter. It was more like a fracture. I bought five books and only because my library did not have them and I have mostly good reasons for purchasing these books. Also, the lighting in here tonight, I think I might have figured out the solution, but the downside to this is no glasses. And I didn't put my contacts in because it is late at night, and so I'm blind as a bat. Where are you guys? I cannot see you. I only see like my outline, which is very, very blurry. No, I'm not that blind. I can see that, but um, yeah, so let's get on with the book haul. So if you watched my past Friday reads where I vlogged for the first time, you will have already seen a sneak peek of these books. But the very first book in this haul, I got this because I am leading a discussion on this book in November in the Facebook book club that I am a part of. Link will be in the description below. So you can go join and come join me discuss this book. That is The Quiche of Death by M.C. Beaton. I have read M.C. Beaton's Hamish Macbeth. I really enjoy Hamish. I think I'm about only two books, I think it's only two books into his series, but I have never read an Agatha Raisin. And I wanted to read Cozies in November. So to my delight, I discovered that this was a cozy and this was voted on as the by the group to be the cozy that we read. So this follows the story of a woman named Agatha Raisin who basically leaves behind her very successful PR firm in London to go to this small quiet village known as Carsley. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, but she discovers that life in Carsley is not all that it is cracked up to be. She's kind of lonely, and because of this, she decides to enter into a local baking competition. What can go wrong? Well, as it turns out, plenty can go wrong because her pie, which the judge hated, by the way, he hated her pie, it actually turns out that it kills him. It kills the judge but Agatha has a little bit of a secret you see she didn't actually make the pie she bought the pie and there was poison in the pie so while she's trying to make friends she actually kills someone off and this is just the trying to figure out who actually poisoned the pie and if Agatha can figure it out in time I am so excited to read this you guys I cannot wait and it's not like small it feels really nice in my hands which which I really, really, really enjoy. Okay, so the next two books I purchased because I got book three from NetGalley and I could not find these two books anywhere. So when I was going into Barnes & Noble to pick this up, I actually found them and I was like, yep, I'm sold because I wanted to read them. I don't like jumping in in the middle of a series, even if it says you can, I still don't like it. It's just a weird me thing. I know some of you guys are the same way. Some of you guys don't mind. Let me know what type you are down in the comments below, but I personally like to start from book one. And if there is a prequel and I'm behind on the series, like I haven't started the series yet, I always start with a prequel. I don't like prequels, like going back after I've started a series. I don't like that. I want to go forward. So yeah, don't even get me started on prequels. I think I didn't read the Lunar Chronicles until I had read Fairest, and then I read the rest of the Lunar Chronicles. That was a really long time ago. But the two books that I picked up are part of a new series by Ellie Alexander, and the first is called Death on Tap, and the second is The Pint of No Return. So I'm just going to go ahead and read the back of Death on Tap to you guys. It says, the Bavarian-themed town of Leavenworth, Washington is home to the Kraus family's cheery generational brujas. Sloan Kraus, gifted with a nose for hops and talent for concocting delicious microbrews, has big plans to expand her in-law's old-school business by creating original handcrafted German beers. Until she sniffs out what's going on between her husband, Mac, and one of his barmaids. Uh-oh. Fortunately, Bavaria, beer various 
hip new microbrewery Nitro is about to launch, and owner Garrett Strong hires Sloan on the spot to craft Northwest-inspired ales, whip up a tasty bar menu, and promote his buzz buzzworthy Pucker Up IPA. Sounds like he is expecting a lot from Sloan. <laughs> Just saying. It's a win-win for Sloan. Oh, okay, apparently she likes it who can't help but enjoy Mac's envy at their success. But when Mac is arrested after one of Nitro's competitors is found dead in a fermenting tank clutching Garrett's secret IPA recipe, Sloane is on the case to exonerate her cheating ex and uncover who spilled over into murder. Ooh. Why she gotta exonerate the cheating ex? We all have that ex that we want revenge on or, you know, we not necessarily like go down that deep dark rabbit hole but if we saw like um i don't know i was about to get really dark you know if we if we saw a bus coming at them we might not warn them until just the nick of time you guys know what i mean you all know what i mean so why she kind of exonerate him but you know apparently he's still in recipe anyway just let him go down for it let him go down slow please girl clock break. You would think that I would know not to film when it's about to be an hour. You know what I mean? Like about to turn into a new hour. You would think I would have mastered this by now, but you would be wrong. So the next book I have had my eye on ever since I saw it over on Courtney's channel, which is Courtagonist. She does a lot of cozy mysteries and it's just a fun channel. I really like her energy and vibes. And this book actually came in second place in the Facebook book club poll of what cozy we should read in November. And it is called Murder in the Mystery Suite. This is by Ellery Adams. Tucked away in the rolling hills of rural Western Virginia is the storybook resort of Storyton Hall, catering to book lovers who want to get away from it all. To increase her number of bookings, manager Jane Stewart has decided to host a murder and mayhem week so that fans of the mystery genre can gather together for some role-playing and fantasy crime solving. This sounds like my freaking dream, you guys. I did do a murder mystery dinner one time and it was decent, it was a little cheesy, but a freaking murder mystery week? Please, please, if you guys know of this, like, let me know. Anywho, when the winner of the scavenger hunt, Felix Hampton, is found dead in the mystery suite and the valuable book he, he won as a, his prize is missing, Jane realizes one of her guests is an actual murderer. Amid a house full of fake detectives, Jane is bound and determined to find a real-life killer. There's no room for error as Jane tries to unlock this mystery before another vacancy opens up. Ooh, it sounds so good so good uh, when i was at barnes and noble i realized there are a ton of cozies about books and i couldn't stop myself i was like "Ooh, i want this one and i want this one and i want this one but i actually had my overdrive app open on my phone and i was just placing them on hold at the library and for those of you that don't know we are concluding with a book that i just needed as soon as i saw the cover I am a huge home reno person. I love home renovations, DIY projects. I'm a little bit, you know, obsessed with that kind of thing. And so when I saw this, I just had to laugh and then added it to my arms. And it's called Dead as a Door Knocker. This is by Diane Kelly. And it says it is a house flipper mystery. I need this. I need this. So this one says... Meet Whitney Whitaker, a hopeless romantic. When it comes to real estate, she knows what it takes to find and flip the home of one's dreams. A fixer-upper is like catnip to Whitney. She can't resist, resist the challenge of turning an eyesore into a priceless work of art. So when one of her clients decides to liquidate a crumbling property, Whitney seizes the opportunity to purchase it for a song. But soon, a curious incident of the cat in the nighttime leads to a change in tune. Sawdust is the name of Whitney's cat, of course. Whitney's passion for gut renovation may be a mystery to him, but one thing Sawdust knows for sure is this, dead bodies don't belong in flower beds. 
So why is there one in this new, albeit old, house? Now it's up to Whitney, along with the help of a hot and cold Nashville police detective, Colin Flynn, to find the truth about what happened before the mortgage company forecloses and Whitney loses her investment and maybe her own life. So Nashville hot and cold detective, are, are we going to Tennessee? Because that would be awesome because I'm in Tennessee. And the Property Brothers just released an article where it said that the two best places to invest in a property are Las Vegas and Nashville. So maybe, maybe, could be fitting. Okay guys, so that is my small cozy haul. I want to know if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought of them down in the comments below. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to become part of the tribe if you have not already. I post new bookish videos every single week and we'll see you very, very soon. Bye.